Okay, my name is Ted Gunn. I'm the shop manager of the Welding Training Center for Training Alberta, CLAC. With me today, I have McKenna Schneider. She is a first year apprentice that works for me, and she's just an awesome little lady. Process we're gonna be doing at this time is CCO, chromium carbide overlay. It's used in the industry to extend the life of materials, whether it be pipe, plate, uh, chutes, everything else mainly used up in the tar sands. The sand is very abrasive and really eats the steel out. So this is put on to extend the life of the pipe or the plate. The product that's used is commonly is Arctec 661T. It's a exothermic welding rod. It's just a steel jacket with some plucks on it and inside it is all the chromium carbide, tungsten carbide and everything that gives it the wear resistance. Normally, when we're testing guys for CCO, we're testing them in three positions. Flat, horizontal, vertical downhand. In the flat, in the horizontal, they take a piece of six inch mild steel plate. They actually mark a line on inch and a half wide in the center of the plate. They weld two passes on, two layers on the flat and the horizontal. When they do the vertical downhand, it's just a single layer. After they've welded that, we bring in an outside firm that does die pan on it. And then after that is completed and they've successfully, successfully cleared that part, we cut the plates in half and we do an acid etch on them to make sure that none of the cracking in the weld has gone into the base material. This is a different thing than normal welding. Welders don't like to see cracks in their welds. When they're welding with overlay, it's going to crack. If it doesn't crack, it's not going on properly. Today we'll be just showing the flat position and the plate has already been prepared by McKenna. She has ground the mill scale off. She has put her etch lines on and she will begin welding her first pass. So what most welders are looking for when they are welding is always looking for a super smooth, pretty bead. When you're doing overlay, it's not gonna be super pretty and, and that it's gonna be lumpy and thin and thick. And eventually, as this starts to cool, it'll start to crack, okay? And that's stress relieving cracks. You can hear it going on right now. As she continues welding across the plate, there'll be more of it but welders are always looking for a real pretty bead and with overlay, you don't want it. When you're doing cladding, it's just done in stringer beads. And the other thing is, even though that rod is a quarter inch rod, normally welders would think that they have to run that quarter inch rod at 200 plus amps. This one here, we're running at 120 amps in the flat and the horizontal. And then when we get to the vertical downhand, we actually turn it down to around 80 amps to run it. Because actually it's, it's just a steel jacket. It's not a solid rod. Most quarter inch rods are a quarter inch solid steel and then the flux on them. This is just a, a sleeve and all the properties are inside there. And the biggest thing you don't want to do is uh, have it dilute with the base material too much. like to point out to people is that the use of a respirator when using this product is highly recommended. Um, chromium carbide poisoning is something nobody ever wants to have. I'm living proof. I've had it. 
you don't want to have it. So I strongly recommend a respirator of some kind or an airflow helmet. Now McKenna is going to do a quick demo on the horizontal positioning and the running of the rod. Most people don't fail this test, okay? It's not a hard, it's a hard test to fail. The biggest thing on the horizontal is you got to watch you don't get undercut. So you want to have your angle of your rod angled up a bit so you don't get undercut along the top edge. That's the biggest thing with the horizontal. So now McKenna is going to show the vertical downhand. I've already changed the amperage on the machine from 120 to 80. She's going to come in, she's going to have her rod with a slight uphand motion to it and she's going to drag it down there doing a little bit of long arc and just keep the rod lit. So now we've had two layers are on, on the plate. That's the max you put on. You can't put any more than two. What happens with hard facing or cladding, if you start trying to put too much buildup on, it does what we call spalling. It'll pull out in chunks from the parent metal because as it shrinks, it, it keeps pulling up. You can see cracks on the plate, on the surface. That is stress relieving. It has to do that, otherwise it will spall out. That's about it.